is an unknown person. But they're so perfect for it. No, you can't. We, we can't get the money to get to raise the film. So they end up, they give the, the producer the, the choice of certain uh, sized stars who have a reputation and they build the economics of making that film. But it's you could say that it's unfair, unfair to the to the newbie of whatever race they are, because they're not they don't have the status to build. The, the, you know, it's like the building block, the building block to build the, the economics to make the film to be able to show it to an audience. It's quite complicated, and very often filmmakers say, "I wasn't able to make this film, which I love, which is a, a film, a low budget film or a big budget film, with the cast I wanted to," and so that's disappointing. Right. And somebody you don't have to start somewhere, you know. If, if, if you're not allowed to take people who haven't got much experience, you'd never. Nobody would progress. That's a good point. Do you think it's easier to break into the industry today than you know yesteryear because of like social media, or do you think it's harder because it's no so? Idea. I have no idea. There's so many projects now, so many series, so many actors. So there's always been. Since I've been in Hollywood, there've always been about a hundred thousand, at least a hundred thousand actors, of which barely five percent work. You can make a living. Everybody else is doing, you know, two or three jobs to try and, and they're also quoting themselves as being actors. A lot of them have never acted before, but they just want to be. They want to be in the social uh, scene, or they want to be. They want to be stars, whatever. So I don't know how how real it all is. I came having done a few jobs in England. I was brought over under contract to 20th Century Fox. I didn't have a lot of um, knowledge. I didn't know much about acting. I had a lot of enthusiasm and I was ready to be very professional. I was very disciplined and I knew that you have to be serious and you about it. And it's not a joke. You're, you're people. It's very expensive to make films and your day, a day of you messing around on the set would cost money and, and not you would not be professionally very viable. So you've got to behave, you know, to some degree, you've got to be serious. And every day that passes hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay everybody and keep a crew going. And everything. so it's a, it's a profession. Um, I think that the world is changing a lot and I don't really know where it's all going to go. It's lots more work now because there's so many series that's great for, for many actors who haven't been seen much and i think there'll be some incredible um newbies who'll come out of all these series and they'll be super talented there are so many talented people here there are there are so many i mean i think that's a misconception of the industry right for people that are not in it they think you know everyone's equal in hollywood and you've been in one series and they don't realize it's right like the amount of people that are working it's so small compared to the talented people that are trying yes. to work right. right and you read about the the five or ten who make fortunes and everybody thinks that well those that's the way the industry is but well, it's not it's not at all there was a time when people were pretty well paid generally but it's shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And a lot of actors, you know, we work for scale and um, and happy to do so. To get a shot, uh, to get a shot. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite film of yours other than Lauren and Rose, of course, that you have done in your several yeah, decade long career? Well, I love Sleepy Time Gal, which is the other film that's going to show in, in New York for showing. And I love um, Rich and Famous, which I was involved with as a co-producer. And I, I love um, aspects of the, I love aspects of the deep because it was such an adventure. And there's things I didn't like about the results of it, but there were lots of films that I've enjoyed. I've learned so much about people and about process. And I've learned so much about the human being, the need people have, the human need, which comes together on a film it, the need for a family, a group of people who are empathetic to you, or I don't know if the word is empathetic or sympathetic, but you can work in, in tranquility together, the closeness necessary to, to get the good work and, and, and the addiction that can form of those people next to each other, near each other. I mean, it's really quite understandable. You don't get to have these kind of very close relationships in most jobs. 
that's why there's a lot of love stories that happen. You know, it's it's a mixture of um, fantasy and reality. A lot of films are written by people who they write wonderful characters. I mean, the director falls in love with his leading lady as he's acting, giving her a role and watching her, falling in love with her. The actors are falling in love with each other to some degree because they have to, that's part of the role. And it, and it, there comes a point when people get muddled. They don't know if it's reality or if it's really happening. And these, all these love stories that come out from films, often of long, long locations away from home, turn out to be much less important when they get back to their lives. But um, the actor, as an actor, you have to throw yourself into the reality of what you're doing. And you can be affected by being attracted by to, some, by to somebody, or you can be affected by disliking someone intensely if you if you have to do that in the role, and be slightly scared of them, or be whatever it is you have to do. You can get caught up in your role, and um, it can mislead you in your life. But, I, I I can see that. Hmm. What about the opposite? Do you have a film or two of yours that you wish you didn't make? Well, there's some of the couple of that I don't really care for. And I didn't feel I was good because I wasn't allowed to do what I wanted. But it not, wasn't terrible. It was just not very pleasant. There's usually something in a film. There's a, always a few days in a film shoot, something you're very frightened of doing and you have to face it and you have to do it. And that can be, oh, can be difficult. And you just want to say, I want to go home. Can I go home? I'm not happy. <laughs> you feel like a child has been given a nasty task. You've been sent to put in the corner and you're going to have to come up with the goods. And it's just awful. Or when they come, you're in your trailer and suddenly you see the producer, the director, and maybe two or three people coming from the, where the bosses are. And they're walking towards your caravan <laughs> and you know, they're coming to try and persuade you to do something you don't want to do. And you, and you know they're coming for that. And you just have to find your way through it. And you just, you know, either you say, I will not be doing this. No, I'm sorry, I will not strip off and do that scene. I've told you I won't before we did this film. And whatever it is that you, that you fear that can come and hit you between the eyes and you just have to deal with it. You have to really be firm and quiet and not get hysterical, but you feel like getting hysterical. You don't know how to stop them from pushing you. You're like, I just you don't want to do this. I just don't want to do this. And I told you this before we started. 